Hello everyone! Today we are going to talk about how not to lose your motivation while preparing for Delta. So let's get started. My name is Julie Demi. I'm a Cambridge certified English teacher and a teacher trainer. In these sessions, I share with you how to prepare for different exams and in this context for Delta module 1, 2 and 3 and share with you my experience and the experience of my colleagues. So let's get started. First and foremost, I would say that you need to be positive. Yes, it sounds trivial, but I would say that everything comes and everything starts with your attitude to what you do. You need to keep a big picture of why you do your exam, why you need it and where it can lead you to in the long run. In other words, try to be specific and don't have some kind of vague perspectives. Keep in mind some particular ideas how your life can be changed after you do the exam successfully. The second tip will refer to your goals related to the sessions that you have. Imagine you have your time for prep, let's say it's about two or three months and you need to prepare every single day. All right, ideally every single day. So you need to have a plan and how to get stuck to your plan and not to give up? This is the question. Ideally, I would suggest having some study group or joining a study group if one exists already. After attending every single session, you will be inspired and you will see the gap, what you know, what you don't know, as well as you will have clear goals, what you need to do for the next time. Besides, collaborative work, as a matter of fact, is one of the most effective ways of acquiring new skills. That's the place, a safe environment, where you will be able to make new contacts with like-minded people, which I would say is the most important thing after you do your exam, as these people may build up your quality network. Such consistent approach will definitely help you remain motivated and focused on what you need to do. You will have some particular assignments and tasks, what you need to research and what you need to read. Then you will understand that some people will do their fair share as well as you will do the same. And then when you meet, you will have a chance to expose yourself to the same topic one more time and understand the subject better. Which leads us to the third tip, create your own study materials. Note-taking is something what you need to consider here. Effective note-taking will definitely help you retrieve and then come back to the same material before the exam itself and brush up on everything what you studied before. Create short study session summaries which will help you stay in tune with the material that you've studied. Taking into consideration the amount of material that you need to read, I would definitely say that it's a really important thing to keep track of all the things and structure them in a logical order. Ideally, you might use some register online I personally use Notion as a second brain and it helps me to store all my information in one place and whenever I need, I can easily find one topic or another using keywords. And again, it leads us to the third tip that I would like to share with you, using technology. That's important and I'm pretty sure that you would definitely agree with me. Quizlet, YouTube session study with me to focus within some period of time on one particular task, FutureLearn, Coursera and many other things will definitely help you and enable you to stay focused and motivated. At the same time, listen to the ideas and some suggestions from your Delta peers. They will definitely share with you some particular resources and the way they store them. I know that many people use Google Docs and share the access with other Deltees. 
It was my case and it was really convenient because everyone did their fair share and then later it was easy for us to retrieve information when we need it. Quizlet might help you prepare for paper one, task one and two. The fifth tip would be to rest well. Having good rest is essential and I would say even vital if you want to raise the performance and if you want to raise the efficacy of your preparation. Don't forget and don't sacrifice your everyday free time in order to learn more or read more. Instead, I would suggest going for using Pomodoro technique, any techniques that help you balance the time that you need to focus on something and the time when your brain can have good quality rest is crucial in your preparation. Tip number six, practice on the old exams. By saying this, I mean picking some paper one and two of previous years and see the guidelines, do the tests and then compare your answers with the guidelines. See where you have the gap and try to eliminate it. In this case, you will see how you progressed throughout the time of your preparation and you will see clearly where you need to go to, what you do well and what needs your further attention. Overall, it can help you track your progress. Ideally, if you have your study group, it might be a great idea to discuss the answers and the guidelines together. Then you will probably understand the material better and it will seem easier to you afterwards. If you study at home, you need to care about your space, which leads us to the seventh tip. Care about your space Organize your space in such a way that you feel yourself comfortable and at the same time remove any distractions that you may have, including your phone or any other distractions like Netflix and other apps. When you study at home, you may have a lot of seductions and something what you can't resist. For instance, if someone is watching Netflix on Sunday, you will definitely want to join and watch some series. Or when someone calls you, you understand that it might be urgent and you want to pick up the phone. Don't do that. Try to resist the temptations like phone calls and Netflix or any other things that might be time consuming. Think about changing your position Think about changing your place where you prepare for the exam. It will be easier for you to focus on some particular task. If I were you, I would definitely leave my comfort zone and instead of sitting at home focusing on some particular reading bit, I would probably go outside, which leads us to a logical solution. Sitting at home is probably not the best idea when you prepare for the exam because you might feel yourself in a cage in this case, I definitely suggest leaving your comfort zone and going somewhere to the cafe or some co-working place where you can focus on some particular task within some period of time. You'll see that your productivity will rise as you will not have as many distractions as you do have at home. Tip number eight, self-reflect on what you've learned. It may happen that at some point you feel that you know nothing and it's obvious because the amount of information that you obtain within some particular period of time of your prep is exhausting and in this case you need to understand clearly what you have done and what is yet to be done. In this case you need to self-reflect it also helps you to see the progress, as I mentioned previously. Self-reflection is a really good practice for every teacher. And I would say for every person. Tip number nine, food. Food is important. Food is as important as what you feed your brain with. Food helps you stay focused. Let's say if you eat one bowl of pasta, you will probably want to fall asleep in 
15 minutes. But if you eat some fresh fruit and drink enough water, you will see that you will remain focused longer and, as a matter of fact, you will study more. Spending some time in the fresh air is definitely something what you need to consider. Don't sacrifice your time that you spend at home and don't think that you need to stay all the time studying. When you have this work-life balance and balance between your free time and time that you dedicate to your education and preparation for exams in this case, is definitely something what will bring about positive results. So do not underestimate your time that you dedicate to your food, rest, and what you consume. How you treat yourself is really important because it also helps your motivation. No one can focus well when you are deprived or exhausted. So keep in mind that you need to think about some healthy food, reduce the consumption of coffee and increase the consumption of fresh fruit and water. And the last, number 10, keep a diary. Yes, it is as simple as it is. Keep a diary where you will share your gratitude. What happened to you during the day that you are grateful for? What happened to you that you think might be a good lesson for you? What have you learned during the day? That's something what will definitely help you be grateful for what you have and be thankful to yourself for what you do. And I know that you do a lot. So guys, I hope that this session was helpful. There were a lot of tips that you already know. I am not sharing with you something new, but when we keep it in mind, it definitely helps us stay focused. I hope that this session was helpful. Keep yourself focused and don't forget about good rest something what is really necessary for a good preparation. If you have any questions or probably suggestions how to remain motivated in the long run while preparing for exams, please share your ideas in the comments down below. If you like this video, your thumbs up will be definitely highly appreciated. Subscribe to my channel if you liked it and uh, if you want to receive more videos like this. I wish you good luck and see you in my upcoming videos. Bye!